let's talk a little bit about American Idol. I've had to make some revisions because the original video I was like 10 minutes long because I can talk. Um, so I think I've got it down to a manageable hole. This year got a couple of changes with Idol. Um, once they got to Hollywood Week, a lot of people would, um, you know, if they messed up, they'd ask for second chances or whatever. This year it was like, once we cut you, that's it, it's over, no second chances. Um, second, if they thought that they were, you know, kind of in, unsure of whether or not they wanted to put you through, um, they'd put you up against someone else and they'd have a sing-off and they'd pick one of you, uh, generally speaking, they'd pick one of you to stay, one of you to go. Um, at the end, there was, uh, there were two guys, um, which I'll talk about one of them in a minute, um, that uh, they, they love both of them, so they put both of them through. So that was nice. But um, let's talk a little bit about the people that I'm really loving that they put through. First of all, my man Danny Goki got my heart like immediately, and I was kind of you know, sappy, but he lost his wife, and so I was like, oh, oh my God. And then he sang, and he's just so talented. I'm absolutely looking forward to seeing where he's going to go with this competition. I think that he definitely needs to be in the top 10 or 12 or whatever it is they're, they're doing this year. Um, Lil Rounds, absolutely another one of my favorites, early favorites. Um, she has like big old voice and um, she knows how to use it. So um, looking forward to seeing what she's going to do with that. Same thing with Scott McIntyre. I thought that he was great when he first auditioned. He did um, acapella, you know, and so it goes. Um, and I thought he was wonderful then, and then he got the opportunity to sing more in his element um, as the blind musician, as the blind musician, as a blind musician. Um, he felt more, feels more comfortable, it seems, um, with um, performing with his whatever instrument of choice for him, piano, um, at least that I know of. Um, and he really shined when he was allowed, allowed to do that. So um, I'm expecting great things from him. Uh, let's see who else was there. Um, Adam Lambert, who took a, that risky move by doing the slowed down, like not dance club version of Shares Believe. Totally potential to blow up in his face, but he managed to make an amazing version out of it. I don't know if that's something that he had done before or whatever the case may be, but it was it really, really worked well for him. So I think that pretty much kicked him over into the, the top 36. So that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see. There's a couple of people. Oh, well, Michael Sarver. He's the oil rigger. Um, not necessarily someone that you'd think would be on American Idol, but um, he has a great voice and um, he just seems kind of a, a genuine, likable kind of guy. So um, I'm glad to see him go through. Uh, I think really the talent is uh, it's there with a lot of the people that got through, but it's really gonna come down to when they start throwing themes and eras and different songs, and, you know, or uh, types of songs. So, you know, if you've got your diehard country singer um, who has impressed the judges thus far because they pick country songs, songs that they're um, really uh, well acquainted with and really comfortable with, you know, it's really easy to impress people when you're you know, doing songs that you love. However, um, when they start going, we're doing songs from the 50s or, you know, we're doing um, hard rock songs or something like that, the real talent's going to come out when um, someone can be out of their comfort zone and um, perform in a way that um, is still impressive to the judges despite the fact that they're not comfortable. I mean, that's really about, you know, what the performance is about is being able to take whatever it is that's thrown at you and be a professional and um, give a good performance. Um, I think that... Scott's going to have a lot of work to do in that um, in that area because a lot of times judges have been critical about, you know, you didn't use the stage, just kind of were there, or, you know, you hid behind your instrument. That came up a lot with um, Jason Castro last season, and um, Scott doesn't really have that, you know, that option as far as moving around the stage, you know, drawing the audience in. So that'll be really something um, to look forward to. Um, couple more things. The people I don't understand why they went through, um, you know, my boy Jamar, who was Danny's best friend through this whole thing, absolutely should have gone through. I mean, his voice was unique and made him stand out from the crowd as far as I'm concerned, but they sent him home and they let people like Tatiana Del Toro in, who 
I mean, I guess maybe she might make for good TV for someone, but you know, whatever you may say about the show, it's got some staying power as far as, as far as the you know music industry is concerned, and um, I think her presence in it kind of makes a mockery of things. But we'll see how far she goes. I mean, if we're voting at top 36, pff, she's gone. Um, I think it was Juno Joyner. I think. He was the one that um, messed up his words um, when they were doing their solo performances and walked off the stage. Uh, totally unprofessional. Um, and it's not something that he's going to be able to do um, if he messes up during you know, the live performances and stuff like that. He should have been cut and, you know, people like Jamar should have stayed. Personal opinion. Um, Nick Mitchell, aka Norman Gentle. He can sing, but he's completely overshadowed by that other personality. He has said a couple on a couple of occasions that he was gonna let the per that that you know personality go. He was gonna go out and show them who Nick really was and show them what he had and you know all this other stuff or whatever. But he can't help himself. It's, I don't know if it's insecurity with being real and being judged for who he actually is, but he just keep, keeps falling back into it. So um, I don't think it's gonna hold for him much longer. Um, I mean, I guess we'll we'll just have to wait and see, but I'm not really looking forward to it. So, anyway, we've got um, the small group starting this week. I didn't check, so I don't remember if it's like one or two groups this week, but um, we may be able to start voting. Um, so, get your phones ready if you're of the mindset to, to do that kind of thing. Um, get it on speed dial or <laughs> whatever you need to do. Um, texting, something. Um, but just like every other season i'm always talking to people about you know their favorites and like oh i wish they had stayed did you call no then shut up so if you're really invested into the point that you want your people to stay make sure you make the phone calls um so anyway i'm looking forward to what this week brings and um i guess i'll check in next weekend and let you know what i think and well if you don't really care what i think then you don't have to listen but until then um have a fantastic week and i will talk to you soon